Welcome to this week's episode of Serving the Community Podcast. Each week, your host, Trisha Stutzel, is highlighting people and organizations in our communities that are serving through volunteer work and giving back to make our community, country, and even the world a kinder place to live. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Serving the Community Podcast. My name is Trisha Stutzel, owner of Results Extreme Business Solutions and founder of this particular podcast you're listening to today. I'm really excited about my guest. First, I want to do a shout out to the person that introduced me to my amazing guest, my friend, Kathy Cortez, owner of Acticare Galveston introduced me to Kinshara Cravens, founder of Craving for a Change Foundation. Kinshara, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to have you on today. We were, before the show started, we were, I was telling you how important what you do is in the community. I've talked to so many people across the United States. They're really focused in this space. So first, as I keep it a secret. First, tell us a little bit about you and your background and how you came to be the founder of Craving for a Change Foundation. Absolutely. So my name again is Kenshara Cravens. Um, I grew up in Lamarck, Texas, born and raised. Um, My background education-wise is in social work. I've been a social worker now for eight years. Um, In my social work role, I always wanted to work with children, but a lot of the areas that we have in social workers is like CPS, some of the ones that are more depressing. So once I kind of got to a point in life where I was stable, um, I wanted to create my own organization where I can provide a service that would still be helpful for the children, but not as depressing as working for CPS, taking children out of their home. So this is how Craving for a Change came about in 2019. Um, When we first started, we are, were originally just focused on the high school age group and we would help them with like transition services. So like, um, if you were ready for college, we'll help you apply for like your FAFSA, finding colleges, all that good stuff. And now we've evolved, um, kind of tapping more into my background of social work. And we kind of focus on incorporating a lot of mental health into, um, our organization. So that's kind of how everything came about. Um, it kind of really was an idea from just kind of my background in school. We took uh, nonprofit classes. We took grant writing classes. So I kind of came in with some like base knowledge um, about how the nonprofit business worked. And it just was a good fit at the time. I was ready to, you know, do something for my community. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it is an uh, important space. And like I mentioned, we were talking before, about the pandemic really having an impact on this particular group of kiddos, right? These adolescents. So how do you feel like that's impact, impacted what you're doing with the foundation? Oh, it impacted us a lot in, in more than one way. We actually became a business in May of 2019. So we became a business like in the, the height of the pandemic. And originally um, we had certain plans for the organization and we had to switch that. We were planning to do things in person. I just had got our office space. We have to start doing a lot of things virtually. But to kind of go back to the main question, how does COVID impact um, our youth? I think our children who had to be out for that year to two years during COVID, I think they're still impacted to this day. I think that a lot of times we don't understand some of the things that children go through at home. And so a lot of children were subjected to, you know, dysfunctional households and certain, you know, things that went on in their homes that they typically wouldn't have experienced to that capacity if it wasn't for COVID. You know, the loss of friends, the loss of family members, just kind of all of that stuff I see still affects some of the kids to this day. Um, I know the kids that I work with specifically, a lot of them lost grandparents during COVID Mm -hmm. and their grandparents were very significant um, roles in their life. So I noticed just kind of that with them, you know, a lot of them suffer from grief a lot during that COVID time and still. Yeah, and yeah, they do. Absolutely. And there wasn't a lot of time or compassion for the grieving because everybody seemed to be grieving. Right. Um, so it was really hard to get plugged into that. So let's talk about, um, craving for a change foundation and the services that you provide and where you provide them. 
Sure. So um, we fall up under what we consider a youth transition um, agency is kind of our umbrella. And under that umbrella, um, we provide career counseling. We provide SEL, which is social emotional learning. Um, we provide FAFSA assistance, college assistance and scholarship linkage assistance. Um, also, with us just being a nonprofit um, located in Galveston County, we do a lot of things also with our um, community. So like once a month, we'll do some type of volunteer event um, for Christmas. We adopted 30 families. So, you know, we also engage into like community outreach um, as well. Nice. I love that. How do you how do the kids get services from you? How are they actually, I I don't know if it's a nomination process or how that works. So it depends. So um, we currently have a contract with Texas City ISD. So we provide the social emotional learning in their after school programs. We are in elementary, middle and high school. Um, So as long as the kids are um, signed up for the after school program, they'll work with us. Um, So those kids, that's how they work for the kids that we do the career counseling with, we have a contract with the city of Texas City. Um, They had a summer internship program and a part of the proposal was allowing a vendor to come in and provide career counseling. So even though the students are no longer interning, we still meet with them once a month. But if someone who is not a part of the contracts that we have want to get our services, it's just a matter of calling our business line or sending an email. And we also offer, you know, one-on-one services to children who are not receiving our services if needed or wanted. Okay. Awesome. So for our listeners, would you give them the telephone number and the website yes. that they could deliver? Or Absolutely. The phone number is 832-735-0077. And then our website um, is www.cravenforchangefoundation.com. And then our email is info at cravenforchange.com. Um, so yeah. You can reach out any way that way. And right now, actually, um, we're piloting something new um, because this is our college season. So we're piloting. We'll start next month and um, anyone can refer to our website. We'll have the dates on there. We're piloting office drop-in hours. So once a month for two hours, we'll offer um, once during the weekday and once on the weekend, two hour slots where if you need help just applying for um, college or whatever you may need. Um, You can just drop in into the office and we'll have our staff there and we'll be able to help. Wow, that's amazing. So where is your office? It is in Texas City. The address is 2501 Palmer Highway and it's Suite 260. We're upstairs on the second floor. Okay, excellent. And so when that starts up next month, folks can just go to your website so they can get more information yes, about that. Yes, the calendar will fantastic. be on the website with the dates. Yes, ma'am. Okay, excellent. Well, your website is beautiful. So oh, for our listeners, you. my listeners out there, you should go out and check out Craving for a Change Foundation website. It's amazing. All right. I want to spend some time talking about how do people get involved with Craving for a Change? You're out there making a difference in the community. You're currently working in Galveston County. I know you want to do more, but you can only do so much yes. with the people that you have and the money that you have. So how can people get involved? Oh, people can get involved many ways. Um, if people want to get involved just monetarily um, on our website, um, it has a donation site and it'll take you directly to how you can donate um, electronically. If you don't feel comfortable electronically, you can mail a check to the office. We have a Zelle. Um, it's just the info for uh, info at cravenforchange.com. Um, but also, With our programs, one of the things that I try to do, especially with our high school group, is we bring a lot of guest speakers in. Um, So like for April, we're doing career month. Um, If anyone wants to volunteer to come in and just expose our children to different careers that they may not know about, this month is our health month. We have a doctor coming. We have a yoga instructor coming. Um, So Honestly, um, on our website, it has a volunteer application, um, the www.cravenforchangefoundation.com. And in the application, it kind of has a slot where individuals can put like if they're in a certain profession or if they have a certain area that they would want to help in. Because again, we can always use guest speakers. Um, We can always use people when we have our community events to come out and help us. Um, We're currently planning a youth conference for the summertime. We could use many volunteers there. We need people to help with, you know, 
setting up, breaking down, facilitating the kids into the breakout sessions and things like that. Um, and usually what I do with our volunteers is once someone applies, they go on our volunteer list. And when we have things coming up, we just reach out and we say, hey, are you available, et cetera. Um, but I think right now, the key thing that I would love to see people come and help with um, is the guest speaking part. I think, you know, even if you're not, you know, in the health industry, or if you're not, um, you know, in the career, even motivational speaking, you know, come in to talk to the kids about, you know, your story. Uh, what I see a lot for our children is that um, they lack exposure. Um, and the more that we are able to expose them to things, the more um, they're able to be more real rounded. Um, so, you know, we have multiple ways, however you want to help, just reach out and we will take the help. <laughs> I love that. And so good news to all of my business owner listeners out there. There are opportunities for you to give back to this particular organization just through telling your story about your business. Uh, I, by the way, can sure I have a lot of connections in the health and wellness space, as well as people who would love to come out and talk to these young adults about their story and their career and the businesses that they're in. Uh, and how cool is it for someone to come in and talk about owning a business, right? Uh, exactly. Especially to this youth. Yeah, it's very important. So anybody who's listening, if you are passionate about mental health and our young adults and transition assistance and all of the things that Kenshara is offering through Craving for a Change, please reach out. I'm going to also put the website and contact information and address for the building in the show notes. You can just click and get directly to there. So Kenshara, we have a few minutes left and I'd love to know if you have a favorite story that you like to tell about your foundation? Oh, I honestly have so many. Um, I have like two that are more recent and I'll, I'll say those two, if it's okay. One of the things that I didn't get to mention to you um, is that we also volunteer monthly at our youth detention center and we go in and we provide okay. those same services there. And um, last month we had, um, we did like a Christmas party for them. We had food catered. It was really nice because, you know, of course, when kids are in the system, the juvenile system, you know, they don't get those luxuries. So it was a really nice experience. And I've been, we've been doing that since, oh, May. Um, so close coming up on a year soon. And one of the boys, he didn't know that I was the founder of the organization. And so we were just talking and he looked at my badge and he said, Miss Cravens, is you? own the organization I was like yeah and he was like <laughs> you don't look like you can own an organization and so when we got to talking again like the exposure is he thought to own a business I had to be of a certain age bracket you know like he didn't right. understand yeah. that you can be a younger person and own a business and have a successful business um so that was a pretty funny story um and then when we first started um we took a week off, something happened, I can't remember, but when we came back, the kids had created these um, poster boards for us, and they were like gigantic thank you cards, and some of them were more personal than others, but it was just so nice to see that, you know, because sometimes when, you, when you're when you doing services, you don't know if people are really, you know, enjoying them, if they're learning something from them. So it was really nice to see that the kids actually felt like they were learning something, they were gaining some toolkit services, you know, just some things they can have in their toolkit for the future. So that was nice when we came back, they, you know, they came out with the cards and they're like, we have a surprise for you. And it was <laughs> nice. Um, so it's nice That's that awesome. they enjoy us. And, you know, it feels like they're actually learning things from us. Yeah. And you're making a difference in the community. And, you know, that's why I wanted you to come on the show and talk about your organization. So I appreciate you being here today. If you would give your website and your contact information one more time as we wrap absolutely, up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, our organization, Craving for Change, can be reached by phone at 832-735-0077. We can be emailed at info at cravingforachange.com. Our address, our physical address is 2501 Palmer Highway, number 260, Texas City, Texas, 77590. 
And our website is www.cravenforchangefoundation.com. Awesome. And as always, you'll be able to find the show on Serving the Community on Facebook. I will also post on LinkedIn as well as my personal Facebook page. And all of the show notes will include the information that Ken Shara just gave to us. Thank you so much for being on the show today. It was my pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. And we'll give Kathy a big hug. Yes. Thank you, Kathy, for the connection. (laughs) I love it. Thank you again for being here. And that concludes this week's podcast, Serving the Community. 